I think we have limiting beliefs as to what something is worth. So if you used to charge $50 an hour, you shouldn't charge $52 an hour. It makes no sense. I think it can get confusing though if you're adjusting your prices like way too often. I think there's a balance to be had around it. I don't really want you to clean my house for a longer period of time. I want it to be clean. Hourly rates don't really work. Another thing you talk about as well, there's a chapter about go higher. I qualify this as like incremental pricing. So for me, I never encourage people just to like double their price and not stack any extra value in there because that gives you extra bandwidth to be able to do more and like get better results. What's incremental? What does go higher mean for you? What's the process there? I must say this. It's built on a premise that you actually know what you're doing. You know how to craft things in copywriting. You know how to build websites. You know how to design a beautiful identity system that's going to use and useful for years to come. It has to be built on that because if you don't know what you're doing don't even listen to this work on something else now here's the thing i think we have limiting beliefs as to what something is worth and we're using our own worldview to determine what it's worth and for you creating something like if you're an expert a wood carver I don't know what the woodworker, you would carve something you're like, ah, I just do this. It's so easy. And someone else will look at you and say, that's magical. I didn't know how you could take a raw piece of wood and turn it into this beautiful handle or pot or something like that. They're like, wow. So if you impose your worldview on value into the world, it's a very self-centered point of view. So what we need to do is we need to allow the market or the world to determine the price. And the price is never truly fixed. It's always flexible. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. So what we want to do is every time you get three yeses for a project, you have to sit there and think, am I artificially capping my, my ceiling on this? And what does that look like? And so when I tell people to change their price to up it, don't make a slightly incremental increase in price. It's super annoying. So if you used to charge $50 an hour, you shouldn't charge $52 an hour. It makes no sense. Go to 60, 75 bucks an hour. So you're really tested. Here's the really cool part. Some people will say yes. Awesome. Some people will say no, that's okay. And if a lot of people say no, it means that the perception from the market is that you haven't earned that just yet. And so what now you, you have a marker, you can start to close the skill gap. You can say, well, who else in my industry or my market is doing work at that level? What do I need to do? What is the difference between what they're doing, what I'm doing? And you just need to close that gap. And I'm just using dollars per hour as a reference point. It's usually, I don't encourage people to charge hourly, but that's a simple way to understand this. Yeah, we, I remember having a conversation with my business partner in my agency and we were having, having the right the annual conversation about increasing the prices and we were quibbling between quarreling between the two of us over five or 10 percent. And I, I was like, which idiot made this rule that we could only put our prices up once a year and buy only five percent or 10 percent if we were feeling really brave. I was like, but price is literally like if. Doris like agrees that she'll pay 10 bucks for something yesterday. You can still agree with Dave tomorrow that it could be 15 bucks. Same product. It's just like whatever that product market fit is, that fair market value is in that moment with that particular person. I think it can get confusing though if you're adjusting your prices like way too often. I think there's a balance to be had around it. Hourly rates are good for freelancers who, who work in an office somewhere where your time is being tracked and that is a pretty standard practice. There are certain unskilled jobs that do work on an hourly basis. But when you ask people, what do you really care about? Is it the time that somebody spends on something or the output of what it is that they've made? And most people say, well, the output. I don't really want you to clean my house for a longer period of time. I want it to be clean. I, I don't want it to take longer to get to a destination. I just want to get there safely. And that's the most important thing. So you need to shift away from thinking about selling your time because if you measure the units of time, then that's what matters. How long did you work on something? Shift it towards at least the outcome or the output. Output being a tangible thing, an identity system or the outcome meaning what difference did it make for my business? How did you transform my business in a way that's positive and something that I look forward to having? So it's more value-based than it is, on, you know, results-based than it is anything else. It was a really valuable lesson again. It's like when you get two web designers, you know, together and they're both charging 50 bucks an hour, but one's just starting out. So he's not particularly good, right? He, um, you know, he takes twice as long as the other one. He doesn't put the blog or the shopping cart on there. Kind of doesn't look great because he hasn't been doing it for particularly long and hasn't honed his, his design skills. And then you get the other one who doesn't know what Chris and Robin know about pricing, still charging 50 bucks an hour, but he's been doing it for 20 years, right? So he, he does like knocks the design out of the park. He got the blog and the shopping cart on there. So it's really productive. He's great with lead gen and copy because he's been you know, so experienced and honed his craft, but he does it in half the time. And it, that's, what, that's the example I always use of like, well, it's just not fair that the guy who's more experienced and does a better job gets paid less than the one who's got less experience. So hourly rates don't really work. It should be based on like solely what the results are.